Welcome aboard, fellow adventurers, to another episode of Audio Adventures, where our only destination is fantastic adventure. This is episode two, book number eight of the original Choose Your Own Adventure series, Deadwood City, written by Edward Packard. I am your humble host and narrator, Caleb Heil, at KTH Dream on Twitter. Basically how this podcast works is, a listener, just like you, plays through a Choose Your Own Adventure book. And then we bring that story to life. If you'd like to play one of these books and have your choices turn into an episode of this podcast, head on over to patreon.com slash p1 and make a small contribution. You'll even have a chance to have your voice in the podcast itself. Speaking of voices, I won't be doing all the acting, as once again I'm joined from across the nation, all the way from California, it's the Laser Time Crew. Laser Time Crew, why don't you introduce yourselves again, but in reverse order. Dave Rudd. Henry Gilbert. And Chris Antista. You can follow their amazing line of podcasts on either lasertime.com or their own Patreon page at patreon.com slash lasertime. Now they have no idea ahead of time what book we're going to be doing. So each week we start off by taking a look at the hilarious, oftentimes weird, oftentimes wacky covers for these books. So you guys ready for this week's book? Oh, sure. uh, oh right. boy. What? I'm okay. ready for another one. It's... Oh, Dead, come on! Deadwood City. City. Oh, boy. I, I love Deadwood the series, so <laughs> yeah. Deadwood City sounds great exactly. to me. I'm going to play that. I'm definitely going to play the theme, <laughs> the introduction. My father that died one... in Deadwood. <laughs> 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 then we warm up our vocal cords by doing a listener-requested impression. Uh, Oh, could you do uh, Buck Strickland? Buck Strickland. You guys take a, or, what? like, any... Uh, oh, hell, game? Hank, I never did this. <laughs> Hank, old top. Oh, Hank old time out I don't remember what he sounded like. Oh, uh, Hank. It was, it was Stephen Rude in his high voice. Like, oh, oh yeah, Hank. Hank I didn't Walk Empire. think he can talk to this guy. I don't think I can okay, do how about, how about Bill? Do your favorite King in the Hill. I can do Bill. Oh, boy. Hank. Oh, boy, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I, could, if I was married to Peggy. If, I, yeah, I was going to say. If it's you warm, I'll sleep inside you, Hank. He's not listening. Dave, can you do a bill? I don't think I can. Bill oh, Dotry. Oh, Bill Dotry. King of the Hill character, then. Damn. 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 <laughs> Bobby Hills. What? Dusty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Pilgrim, that's about it. It's time to settle up and head on out to... Deadwood City. Imagine yourself on horseback, riding along a desert trail, humming a tune. In the distance, you can see the snow-capped peaks of the Rocky Mountains. You have been working as a cowhand in the Old West, but your last job was boring. So about a week ago, you packed up and headed on out to Deadwood City. Now you're finally approaching your destination. It's late afternoon. It is a warm, dry day, and as you ride into town, a fresh breeze blows the dust up in the swirling clouds. The streets are nearly deserted, and the few people you see seem nervous and tense. You wonder what to do. You might go over to the saloon and see what's happening there. You know that in a western town, there's no better place to pick up the news than the saloon. But maybe you should go to the hotel. The clerk at the front desk can probably tell you what's doing in Deadwood City. Besides, you might need a place to stay for the night. Then again, you might go to the sheriff's office. If there's trouble in Deadwood City, the sheriff is likely to know about it. You walk over to the saloon. There are about ten people sitting at the bar. A bald man is at the piano, chewing on a cigar, and banging out an old tune. Everyone looks around nervously when you walk in. You sit down at the table and order something to drink. Some card players nearby ask, Hey, wanna play a hand? Well, sure, why not? You know what the stakes in the game are? The loser has to go out and take care of Kurt Malloy. Well, who's Kurt Malloy? King of the Outlaws, that's who he is. He's coming to town and it's up to one of us to stop him. You can decide to stay and play cards, or you can decide to walk out of the saloon. You play a few hands of poker. Your luck is good, and you win five silver dollars. Then someone shouts that Malloy and his gang are riding into town. 
Okay, the next hand's to see who goes out to meet Kurt Malloy. He deals out five cards to each player. You pick up your hand and look at the cards. You have the eight of clubs, and the three, the five, the eight, and the jack of hearts. The rules allow you to throw down three cards and pick up three new ones. If you keep the eights, you at least have one pair, and you might pick up another eight, making three of a kind. But if you could get another heart in exchange for the eight of clubs, you would have a flush. And that would be almost sure to beat any other hand. You decide to throw down only the eight of clubs and try for a flush. You draw the six of spades, which leaves you with a worthless hand. Tough chump. You lost. You'll have to go out and wait for Kurt Malloy. You know there is no choice. Malloy and his gang are about to ride into town, and you've been appointed official greeter. You slowly walk through the swinging doors. Outside, the setting sun is so bright that you have to squint to see straight. When your eyes have adjusted to the light, you find yourself staring at the meanest looking man you've ever seen. You know it must be Kurt Malloy. The three men riding up behind him do not look any nicer. Ignoring the other people on the street, Malloy rides straight up to you. He brings his horse to a stop and looks down at you contemptuously. I'm not sure I want you in this town, kid. You can tell Malloy that you don't want him in this town either. Or you can keep your cool and avoid trouble. You walk right up to him and say, You're Kurt Malloy, aren't you? And who do you think you are? I hear you're planning to take over this town. Yeah, you got the picture. Well, Malloy, I'm here to tell you this town doesn't want you. He goes for his gun, but you're ready for him and you draw two. You miss Kurt Malloy completely, but he shoots you in the right leg and you sink to the ground. I'm letting you off easy this time. Malloy says as he returns his gun to his holster. Then he and his buddies gallop off, leaving you lying in the dust. Some people come running out of the saloon, and they help you up and take you to a doctor. Fortunately, your wound is not serious, and after a few days rest, you feel strong enough to leave town. You can go after Malloy and try to get even, or you can forget about Malloy and leave Deadwood City. You vow to get Malloy as soon as you have a chance. A week later, you're sitting in the saloon when the bartender tells you the news. Malloy and his gang are coming back into Deadwood City. They've already held up most of the shopkeepers in town, and now they have their eyes on the bank. You put down some money and walk out through the swinging doors into the bright sunlight. There, a few hundred feet down the street, are Malloy and his gang, heading towards the bank. You know a U.S. Marshal has just checked into the hotel. You can decide to go get the U.S. Marshal or you can go right out and confront Malloy yourself. You run at top speed to the hotel and quickly find the marshal. You tell him that Kurt Malloy is heading towards the bank. The Tyler brothers, who run the general store right across the street, had previously volunteered as deputies, and at a call from the marshal, they come running out. The four of you rush to the bank. Malloy and his buddies are already inside, holding up a cashier. In a moment, they come out, carrying over $10,000 in greenbacks. As the outlaws run out of the bank, you, the Marshal, and the Tyler brothers run up crying out, Reach for the sky! Reach for the sky! One of Malloy's men foolishly fires, but he's immediately felled by the Marshal. Malloy, who is a coward at heart, surrenders and begs for mercy. The Marshal comes up and shakes your hand. Good work. You'll be getting a good share of the reward for the capture of Kurt Malloy. Well, that's it, folks. Happy trails to you until we meet again. But if you'd like to follow me between now and the next episode, be sure to visit the Planet Podcast Patreon at patreon.com slash p1, or on Twitter at kthdream, or even the Planet Podcast YouTube page. Also, be sure to visit Chooseco, the owners of the Choose Your Own Adventure books, at cyoa.com. Tune in next time for the grand finale of these original three recordings, Daredevil Park. Daredevil Park.